This is to all those who've been listening to old time radio that I've been podcasting for 12 years. It's time for you to purchase the old time radio collection now at the lowest prices ever. 500 gigabyte external hard drive chuck full of radio shows that we all love. And don't forget the bonuses. Here's my offer. I need everyone who hears my voice to go to oldtimeradiodvd.com to place your order today. With every order, I will include a comprehensive show guide with episode descriptions over 1982 pages this is truly once in a lifetime deal place your order today at oldtimeradiodvd.com you will be glad you did somewhere in the silent movements of time the whirling vacuum of space and the blackest illusions of the mind There are stories whispered across the stars. Tales from the other side. On the earth as we know it, in a time we call the present, Janet Browning about to find the world she knows crumbling before her eyes changing into a tale from the other side The Breakthrough by Winifred Phillips Labcom Research and Development How may I help you? Oh, Dr. Riley. Um, Dr. Browning isn't available at the moment, ma'am. She's in the middle of some important research. Well, I can take a message for you, and I'm sure she'll get right back to you. Her generator time has been approved. Taking effect immediately, she's online for full power. Yes, I'll get that message right to her, Dr. Riley. Hi, Megan. Yes, Dr. Riley. Goodbye. Dr. Riley? Calling here? Since when is the president of LabCom deigned to get involved in the company? Since Dr. Browning appealed to her personally for generator time. Well, I- I've got to let her know she's been approved. I'm on my way in. I- I'll tell her. Oh, are there any messages for me, Megan? Uh, just a second, Doctor. I have to answer the phone. Labcom Research and Development. How may I help you? Oh, hi, Harry. I can't talk right now. Aren't you supposed to be on duty? (laughs) Yes, I'll meet you in the lobby after work. Bye, Harry. So, you and the security guard are still serious? (laughs) As serious as you and Dr. Browning are. How would you know? I know everything. I'm the secretary. How'd the date go last night? You don't know everything. She canceled. Had some work to do. Hmm. Like always. Are, are there any messages for me, Megan? Uh, no. Uh, no messages here for you, Dr. Martin. Thanks, Megan. I'll see you later. Oh, Greg. Terrific. I need your help. Hi, Janet. Boy, it really looks like rain out there. Oh, Megan told me to tell you that your uh, generator time has been approved. Fantastic. Now I'll get somewhere. She tells me you had to petition the president of LabCom herself. Oh, you know bureaucracy. I wasn't getting anywhere with requisition, so I went straight to the top. Not that that was easy. What do you need the extra power for? Your VC-12 project doesn't require high power levels. It's uh, communications, not nuclear fusion. I don't need it for that. The VC-12 is not the only project I'm working on, you know. What? Are you dabbling again? I wouldn't call it dabbling. I'm diversifying. You certainly are spending enough time working on whatever it is. Oh, I'm sorry about our date, Greg. I was in the middle of something. You know how that is. Wait a minute. You've got that look in your eye. What look? That mysterious look, like you've got something crazy up your sleeve. You're planning something. What makes you think that? Come on, Janet. What are you planning? What's this mysterious project? 
You want to come down to the lab tonight and find out? What is this new project, Janet? I'm not saying anything. You want to know? You'll come tonight. Hmm. This is starting to sound interesting. So, will you come? I could use your help. Only if you have dinner with me afterwards. We'll have to eat Chinese. We could take it over to my apartment, share one pair of chopsticks. Mugu Gai Pan. I've been saving a bottle of white wine. Oh, stop it. You're getting me all hot and bothered. Hmm. Me too. Why don't we slip out of here quietly? What about the VC-12? <sighs> oh, the VC-12. We'll have to wait till tonight. After you show me your mysterious experiment. Yes, then I'll really feel like celebrating. It is pouring out there. You look like a drowned rat. There's some towels in the drawer. Well, there is a thunderstorm warning issued for this area. Hmm, I wouldn't know. I've been here all day. I can see that. What is this thing? My secret invention. I can hear the extra generator power. When did that come online? A few hours ago. Here, hold this. Hey, this is cute. Looks like a little cellular phone. Something I made in college as a final project for a class. What does it do? Nothing, actually, but it would if the proper satellite network was established. It would send its signal to the satellite and be able to communicate to people halfway around the world, avoiding the need for connections through a phone company, you know, theoretically. Neat. What, it uh, sends a radar signal? There's a set of computer chips in there that dispatch a digital signal another computer would understand. There's also fiber optics in the receivers. It is like a cellular phone and a satellite dish and antenna, but it really is useless. There's no properly equipped satellite to receive its signal, and since the construction of one would be too expensive, this will always remain useless. But that's not important. I'm just going to send it on a little journey. Where? One minute forward in time. What? One minute forward in time. Oh, come on, Janet. This... Listen, Greg. See that machine over there? I invented it, and I swear it can send a small object backwards and forwards through time. Are you sure? I haven't gotten a chance to try it yet. So, how do you know? The stations are correct. This should work. Don't get your hopes up too high. Don't patronize me, Greg. I'm not green and I'm not a child. I know what I'm doing. Sorry. like that. Well, well, let's get started. What do you want me to do? First, give me the device. I need to put an electronic tracer on it. Here. You're going to try to trace this thing through time? The tracer has a core of radium-226 with a casing that emits a small electrical charge to stimulate it to discharge a slight gas. Whenever it appears in time, I'll be able to track it by determining the age of the gas residue appearing in the casing, which should be showing a half-life dissipation. Then I'll be able to retrieve the device by precisely determining its position with the tracer and reversing the procedure with the same amount of electrical energy. What's this casing? There's a clear casing on the table over there. I want you to put the device into the case. It's connected to the TTD, the machine. Then take the video camera on the shelf and start rolling. I'll be setting the coordinates of the TTD and activating power, okay? What if, what if nothing happens? I'll worry about that. The lids of this case is heavy. What's it made of? It's that heat-resistant plastic they've been using in the chem lab. Make sure you clamp it back on tight. I don't want the gas escaping. Clamp secured. The videotape is rolling. Keep it trained on the case. All right. Why are you sending that device? Why not send, a, I don't know, a, a pencil or something? I like the idea that the device is finally going to get used for something. All right, I'm turning on power. It should start traveling in ten seconds. Reading a power surge. It's the storm. Shut down. I can't. It would overload the generators and feedback. Blow all the fuses in the building.
black cow. Janet, I can't see a thing. Can you get any candles in? must have thrown off the settings. Thirty years back? Agent Brownlee? Megan, late. Late? What are you talking about? Agent Browning, I just received orders from Section Control to inform you that you're under arrest. What? Come on, Megan, is this a joke? I'm under arrest? Unauthorized research, Agent Browning. Officer Patterson is coming to take you into custody. Agents? Come on, get serious, Megan. I'm nothing I can do. Don't try. The doors won't accept your handprints and voice identification. Look, look, Megan. Will you let us in on all this? What's up with the lab? What's all this about arresting Janet? Agent Janet Browning, I place you under arrest for violation of 10-6 Section B of the Revised Constitution of 1970. Come with me. Look, Harry, there must be some... Don't standing. make me shoot you, Browning. All right. All right. Start walking. Janet, you can't do this to... No, we have no choice. Just go along. You don't have to push. Dr. Riley, what's going on? What are you doing in that uniform? Is this some kind of gag? You will address the controller by her proper title, Agent Browning. Report, officer. Computine 5000 reported a 10-6 Section B violation. Monitoring systems showed Agent Janet Browning in Lab 5 with Agent Greg Martin. An accomplice. Leave Greg out of this. Computine monitoring analysis reported Agent Martin as a bystander. Understood. Your work has been excellent, Officer Patterson. Thank you, Controller. So, Agent Browning, you've turned traitor on us. I'm not a traitor. I just don't know what's going on. What is Computine? What have I violated? Why is everything different? It's not going to work, you know. What isn't? Pretending insanity, it's not going to work. Who do you work for? Labcom Research and Development. Is that an offshoot of Loeb? What? Loeb. The League of European Business. I don't know what you're talking about. All I know is that this building is Labcom Research and Development. And I'm not an agent. I'm Dr. Browning. Look over at the far wall. What do you see? A map. A map. It's divided into sections. Read the names aloud. Autotech, Opticom, Compudine. Do you see Labcom anywhere? No. Why don't you start telling the truth? How did you infiltrate Opticon Central Control? Wait a minute. Thirty years ago, were you working here? I'm asking the questions. Yes, you were. I remember. That was the beginning of what would become Labcom. Of what would have become Labcom. 
Did you find a small device about the size of a cellular phone 30 years ago? That's highly sensitive information. Who was your informant? You did. You found the device. What happened? How did all this happen? Who was your informant? No one. You'll talk, traitor. It may take days, but you'll talk. You'll tell me the country you're smuggling technology to sooner or later. So you're telling me that this place is called Opticom, and it's the central control of one-third of the United States. Well, I don't understand why you're asking me these questions, Agent Martin. Everyone knows the answers. Just let me get this straight. Thirty years ago, three business associates, including Dr. No, Controller Riley, meet in this very same building and discuss some fabulous breakthrough discovered by Riley herself? Yes, I told you that before. That was Controller Riley's biggest mistake. The associates took the information and formed two other companies based on the technology Controller Riley had shown them. That led to economic war, of course. What is it? Is, is Central Control doing another sweep survey? Trying to find out who's leaking information again? No, no. I'm just asking. And now the country is split into three separate districts? Yes. Opticom, Autotech, and Computine. The three businesses are located in those areas, and they virtually run everything. Government couldn't compete. I feel so stupid saying what everyone knows. I know, I know. Just humor me. What do these companies make? Well, Opticom, that's us, makes satellite networks, monitoring systems, communication systems, including those new communicators people wear that hook them into satellite communication. <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing. Go on. Okay. Autotech produces automation. You know, the robots that drive the trains and make everything, the household robots, the great self-driving cars, all that. Computine makes the supercomputers that have information about everything and everybody. They pioneered the Computine 5000, which we bought to monitor the entire sector. That's how Janet got caught. That's right. What's this revised constitution? Oh, that ended the civil war between the big businesses. Stopped all the spying and the car bombs and letter bombs that were happening then. It pretty much set up the law for business dealings. Now all we have to worry about is the League of European Business. Why? Well, they hate America like crazy. Well, because we're so technologically ahead of them. They try to block our goods from getting into their countries, but it still gets in. There's a blockade now. I've heard about it in the news. Our ships try to break it. They shoot at us. It looks like war, you know? Damn. War? If it comes to that, we'll win it. After all, we're at least 30 years ahead of them, technologically. 30 years? Riley must have found the device. Uh, the what? Look, Megan, are you still going with the security... No, with, uh, with Officer Patterson? Yes. Why? I need to find a way to get Janet back to the lab. You mean, help her escape? I can't do that. Megan, just listen. I have to tell you something. You're probably not going to believe it, but I have to tell you. It all started when Janet showed me this machine. She said she could make things happen. Who are you working for? I'm telling you the truth. The device you found was something I made. I put it in a time machine and sent it back 30 years. You've got to believe me. It's the truth. You expect me to believe such a preposterous story? You have to. Look, the device was equipped with a set of computer chips and fiber optic receivers. You have good informants. I made it, Controller. Controller Riley, don't you think that if she knows the components of this device that she must be telling the truth? I didn't give you permission to speak, Officer Patterson. Harry, you believe me, don't you? Do you like this world you're living in? Does it seem right? Make sense? None of this should have happened. I've got to go back to my lab and retrieve the device using the electronic tracer. I can get it back at the moment that it left. None of this would have ever happened. Excuse me. CompuDyne reports Officer Patterson is needed in the computer center. You're dismissed, Patterson. Yes, Controller. Harry, I need your help. You know I'll do anything for you, Megan. Agent Martin has just told me an incredible story. But I think I believe it. You mean about the device? 
You've heard it? Agent Browning was telling the same story to the controller. What do you think? I don't know. It is hard to believe, but... But it just seems to make sense, right? Being 30 years ahead of every other country, it's strange. I hadn't thought about it, but it is strange. Agent Martin thinks that if we can get Agent Browning back to her lab, she'll be able to reverse what happened. You mean help her escape? I can't do that. You wouldn't be helping her escape. Just when you take her to a holding cell, you can make a little side trip to the lab. I'd be disobeying orders. No, you wouldn't really. You'd just be elaborating on them a little. Please, Harry, for me... I suppose it wouldn't hurt anything. That's my Harry. What about Computine 5000? It will sound an alarm once it detects Agent Browning in the lab. Oh, well, um, I guess we'll just have to hope she's finished with whatever she has to do before the alarm sounds. Still, I could put in a pre-recorded cassette of an empty lab in place of the lab monitors. It should slow Computine down. That's brilliant. You know, we could both get into a lot of trouble for doing this. I know. But if Agent Browning is right, then none of this will ever have happened, will it? So we'd really never have done this at all. True. So what's there to lose? Let's do it. What agency do you work for? Labcom Research and Development. I told you before. Officer Patterson, come in here, now. Yes, Controller Riley. Take her to a holding cell. Let her think it over. Yes, Controller. On your feet, Agent Browning. All right, all right. This is not the end of it, Browning. Remember that. Take her away. Just look straight forward. Listen, I'm taking you back to the lab. Harry! Shh. I don't know how to thank you. Thank Megan, not me. She convinced me. You will have to hurry. It won't take long before Computine sounds an alarm. Look, clip this to your shirt. What is it? Person-to-person communicator. It'll connect you to Agent Greg Martin. He's down in the basement, the generator room. He says you'll need some kind of burst of power. Greg, you're always thinking. Yes, I'll have to recreate the power surge that sent the device back in time. Can you do it? We'll see. Here we are. Recognize Patterson, Harry M. Officer, first class. Agent Browning, is there anything we can do? How do you work this communicator? Just flip the switch. Okay. Greg, are you there? Ready whenever you are, Janet. Let's just hope. What is that? Computine must have discovered the tape. There'll be officers here any second. Just a moment. I have to set these controls. Hurry! Give me power, Greg. Now! Try to find a candle somewhere. Craig, how'd you get up here? I, I don't know. One minute, I'm down in the generator room. I throw the switch. Everything goes black. And now I'm up here. Oh, of course. Everything would revert back to the way it was when the device returned. If it returned... Thank God, the lights. Oh, my lab. Back the way it was. Primitive technology and everything. I love it. And and there it is. The device. 
It's over. Well, I'll tell you one thing. What? Boy, am I ready for that Mugu Gai Pan. With a bottle of white wine. That too. The communicators. What? We're still wearing Harry's communicators. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) I can't believe it. Well, what do we do with them? We destroy them. You're not in the least bit tempted to take them apart? See how they're made? Are you nuts? That's how all this started. (laughs) (laughs) We'll toss them into your fireplace tonight. How's that? We'll toast the world that almost was. Perfect. We'll watch them burn over white wine and Mugu Gai Pan. In an apartment somewhere on the planet Earth, two humans toss into the fire a piece of technology far in advance of their own. A technology that rose from an earth that might have been in a tale from the other side. Script and score for The Breakthrough were written by Winifred Phillips. The role of Greg was played by Paul DeLeo. The role of Janet was played by Judy Stiskin. The role of Megan was played by Winifred Phillips. The role of Harry was played by Patrick Barnes. The role of Dr. Riley was played by Winnie Waldron. The Tales from the Other Side radio drama series is produced by... Generations Radio Theater, which is solely responsible for its content. Copyright 1992. W.P. Phillips. All rights reserved.